okay so today uh, we are going to study about uh, some matrices and a new concept uh, which is called as idempotent and nilpotent elements so let us start with this first problem now so here i am supposed to find the number of elements of the uh, ring m2 z2 okay so let me start with it so what is m2 z2 so this actually in our correct notations we write it as m2 z2 okay means all 2 by 2 matrices okay with the uh, entries in what the entries are in z2 okay now how many matrices can you write uh, with which are 2 by 2 and the entries are from z2 now z2 has only two elements z2 has what zero bar and one bar so if you write the first matrix i will write zero bar at all the places then i will write one bar here and zero everywhere then i will write one bar here and uh, zero everywhere third position is one bar here and zero everywhere and so on till i get one bar everywhere okay now how many such elements can you find right so if you look at the first uh, entry okay if you just look at the first entry of that matrix of such a matrix it's first suppose the matrix is a b c d now you see a has two choices because a can be zero and one anything okay b also has at the same time two choices so similarly c has two choices and d also has two choices so what are the uh, total number of choices so the total choices will be how much will be 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 so it will be 16 such matrices we will be able to form and therefore this means that m2 z2 has how many elements the number of elements uh, of m2 z2 has is 16 okay now we want to find in the next part we also wanted to find uh, what are the units of this ring so what uh, what elements will have inverse in this ring so what are the units of this particular ring right what is the meaning of units the meaning of unit is that the element must have what the element must have inverse okay i hope you understand that if you take any matrix which is of this form zero zero the determinant is going to be equal to zero here also you will not be able to find the inverse so wherever that one alone is there all such matrices will be out of the picture right so if i look at the identity matrix the identity matrix has inverse identity so that will have an inverse if i have a matrix which is one one and a one here okay then that matrix will also work okay so this matrix uh, also has uh, inverse similarly if i take a lower diagonal matrix i will even this matrix has uh, the inverse so i can even put at uh, put as one zero one one and the next choice is one one zero one okay so these three elements at least i have now is there any other element uh, which has an inverse if i look at uh, 1 1 1 1 okay such this type of matrix 1 1 1 1 what is the this matrix will uh, not have inverse because uh, its its determinant is going to be zero so this matrix will, will be a bit problematic for us okay so i guess that these are the only units that you will be able to actually uh, remaining with okay now let us move to this one of the most important uh, problems in field theory that if you to take r and c if you take real numbers and complex numbers then real numbers and complex numbers are not isomorphic fields okay so i will write a question on the next page so real numbers is not isomorphic to complex numbers as fields okay now why real numbers is not isomorphic to complex numbers field so i will just give you a brief justification okay you just have to remember this particular result you what is the reason behind it the small reason is that you just consider the equation x square plus uh, one equal to 
zero okay if you consider this is equation and if you try to solve this equation you will get if you try to solve this equation you will get x is equal to what you will get x is equal to plus or minus i okay now this is a complex uh, root okay and uh, this complex root is such that so this root belongs to complex numbers right so this means that uh, the equation x square plus 1 uh, equal to 0 has root in c but it has no root in real numbers right so in real numbers this equation has no root right so this is the reason that these two fields are actually different if they were isomorphic what what should have happened that if i can solve some equation in this space then i must be also able to solve the equation in the other space also okay so the spaces must have the same property but here it is not happening this that x squared plus one is having a root in complex numbers but it is not having root in the space of fear in the space of real numbers so this is the reason that uh, the real numbers field is not isomorphic to the field of complex numbers now if you look at the next one so what is this i am having a homomorphism which is from integers to a ring this is not real number okay this is a ring okay so if i write r like this that is a ring uh, that is a real number okay so what is that phi given by phi is given by phi of n is equal to n times one okay, then this is a one of the most famous homomorphisms that is often used on the set of integers to an arbitrary ring okay and uh, this is actually very easy to show that this is a homomorphism because if i take phi of n plus m then it will mean that it is uh, n plus m times one and therefore by distributivity i can write it as n into one plus m into one and therefore that will become what phi n plus uh, phi m okay and uh, what about phi of mn okay phi of uh, mn is also not very difficult phi of mn will be equal to what mn into one okay and uh, what is the meaning of phi of uh, mn into one this means that one i'm going to take mn times so i'm going to add one i'm going to add one how many times to add one mn times okay right and if you have phi uh, one is added m n times it is the same as the product of one plus one plus one m times and multiplied by one plus one plus one n times okay so if you multiply this one uh, here you have m times and if you have multiplied by one n times when you do all the multiplications how many m uh, how many ones you will get you will get mn times you will get once so this is nothing but what this is n in m into 1 and uh, multiplied by this is n into 1 and what is m into 1 m into 1 is nothing but phi m multiplied by this will become what this will become phi n okay so this is the reason that this phi becomes a homomorphism okay so the next uh, exercise is uh, this now this is saying that if you are working in a ring zp okay then the formula of a plus b raised to p will become what a raised to p plus b raised to p i hope you understand the importance of this exercise this exercise actually is uh, saying what if you are working in suppose you are working in z suppose you are working in the set of integers just understand this exercise first if you're working in set of integers okay what is a plus b cube a plus b cube will be what a cube plus 3 a square b plus 3 a b square plus b cube okay what will be a plus b raised to 10 it will be what a raised to 10 plus 10 c1 a raised to 9 b plus 10 c2 plus dot 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 plus 10 c 9 a into b raised to 9 plus b raised to 10 this will be the expansion of a plus b power 10 okay but this result is trying to tell you that what is this result trying to tell you? if p is a prime so which power i'm going to take i'm going to take a prime power and if i try it and if i'm working in zp okay then what will happen uh, a and b are in zp then a raised to p a plus b raised to p will be 
turning out to be these middle people will all go away and it will just become what first term raised to p plus last term raised to p so, so life becomes very simple in what life becomes very simple in zp okay so the reason to this is actually very simple so uh, what we know is that if p is a prime okay this is a basic algebra exercise you can do it in your leisure so if p is a prime that p always divide pcr okay where r goes from what r goes from 0 to r goes from 1 sorry r goes from 1 to p minus 1 okay so this means this x this is equivalently trying to tell us that p will always divide pc1 p will also always divide pc2 and p will always divide what pc p minus 1 so p is al always going to divide this okay and that is the reason when i start with the left hand side which is a plus b raised to p so by binomial expansion okay this is equal to what a raised to p plus pc1 a raised to p minus 1 plus uh, a raised to p minus 1 into b plus blah 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 plus pcp minus 1 okay and a into b raised to p minus 1 plus b raised to p and when i take modulo p because i'm working in which space i'm working in more in zp right so everything will be working modulo p what happens to this coefficient p divides uh, pc1 if p is dividing pc1 okay what is the value of p choose 1 in that case p choose 1 is a multiple of p and therefore it will be congruent to what zero if in zp what is the speciality anything which is multiple of p p 2 p 3 p 4 p all these multiples will become what zero in zp right even p, if p divides pc2 what is the meaning of p divides pc2 means pc2 is a multiple of p because p is dividing pc2 this equivalently means that pc2 is congruent to what zero in this way all the middle terms will become congruent to zero up to p minus one okay and therefore what will be left with you you will be left with only a raised to p plus b raised to p this is obviously going what modulo p so we have proved that in zp a plus b raised to p is congruent to a raised to p plus b raised to p so if you ask us a simple question in uh, in what in suppose i'm asking in z5 what is a plus b raised to 5 the answer to this question will not be a raised to 5 plus um, plus what 1 4 6 4 1 right so the coefficients are 1 4 6 4 1 so it will be a raised to 4 b plus a cube b square plus a square b cube and and then i think i'm going wrong i wrote it for a if i wrote it for 5 it is 1 5 10 10 5 and 1 okay and then this will be 5 a b raised to 4 and then this will be b raised to 5 so this is the expansion of a plus b raised to 5 okay and this is not the correct answer so what is the correct answer because you're working in z5 it will be just equal to what it will be just equal to a raised to 5 plus because all these are multiples of 5 so 5 and 10 10 5 all will become 0 modulo 5 and therefore this will become your simple expression for a plus b raised to 5 okay now so i hope that exercise is now clear to you now here in this particular second problem we want to uh, uh, show that the set of all idempotent elements of a commutative ring is closed under multiplication okay now we all uh, know what are idempotent elements i will still once just revise here what is meant by idempotent elements i will say that an element is idempotent if it uh, if its square is uh, same as the original number okay then a is said to be idempotent okay now if you take uh, what is this exercise trying to tell us it is trying to tell us that it is trying to tell us that uh, if I take two idempotent elements, okay, if A and B are two idempotent elements, then uh, let me write A and B are idempotents. Then we want to actually show that AB is also idempotent, okay, and why AB is idempotent and in which ring I'm uh, talking, I'm talking in a commutative ring, okay. Let me read that exercise for you again. 
see that exercise says that show that the set of all idempotent elements in a commutative commutative ring is closed under multiplication means if a is idempotent b is idempotent then uh, a into b is also idempotent so that is easy if uh, a is idempotent means a square is a b is idempotent means b square is b so what is ab square what is ab square this ab square is nothing but ab into ab which is nothing but a into b dot a into b i have taken up have combined these two two people together but i know that the ring is commutative so ba can be converted into what ba is nothing but ab and therefore i will collect a's together and b's together and therefore this means that ab square is a square b square but a square is a so and the, and b square is b so this means that we have proved that ab the whole square is again coming to be ab this means that ab is idempotent is proved so we have we have done that in a commutative ring product of two idempotent elements is again a idempotent element this can be a good objective for if the ring is commutative not commutative and so on so on you can make some options there okay so in that case we are supposed to find the idempotence of what we are supposed to find idempotence of z6 cross z12 so what are the idempotence of uh, z6 cross z12 i want to find the idempotence here okay now we will do what we will first find the idempotence of z6 okay what are the idempotence in z6 so uh, what are the numbers in z6 which are 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay what are the numbers whose square are the same right first of all 0 ka square is again 0 so 0 square is uh, 0 so 0 is an idempotent what about 1 1 square is also 1 so 1 will also be an idempotent 2 square is 4 which is not same 3 square is uh, 9 but 9 is 6 uh, so 9 is uh, 3 right in which space are we talking if we are talking in the space z6 so 3 will become an idempotent 4 square is 16 uh, and 16 in z6 16 in z6 will become how much that will again become 4 correct so 4 is also an idempotent 5 square is 25 and 25 is 1 so 5, 5 will not become so these are the idempotents in what these are the idempotents in z6 similarly i will find idempotents of z12 Okay, I know that 0, 1, then uh, 2 is not there, four, 3 is not there, 4 is also, 4 square is 16. So, 4 square is 16 will become 4 in Z12, okay? And 5 square will not become idempotent, 6 square is 36, 36 will become 0, I think, okay? Mm, and so on, okay? I will calculate this. Now, I will not complete this list, okay? So, this is the way I will find the idempotence of what? Z12. So, independently, when I found out the idempotence of Z4, uh, Z6, and I have found out the idempotence of Z12, what are the total idempotence in what? The total idempotence in Z6 cross Z12. Now, I hope you have understood the logic. You will take 0 with 0, you will take 0 with 1, then you take 0 with 4, and you will form such pairs. Okay. If you get four elements here, and if, if if you get suppose if you get six elements here, this list will contain how many elements? This list will contain 24 elements, 24 pairs, right? Zero, zero, 1, then 0, 4, and so on. Then then after considering 0, I will start with 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 4, and I will write go, go on writing all such pairs okay so it may it is it, it is a good question now you have found out all the idempotents and once you have understood that this has four idempotents and suppose you understand this is eight idempotents how many idempotents you will be able to find in z6 cross z12 so your declaration will be you will just you will not keep on finding all those idempotents you will just say that there are how many idempotents there are 32 such pairs which will be our idempotent now i really don't know how many really the idempotents are so you can do this as an exercise go on finding the idempotents and you will get how many idempotents are there in z6 cross z12 let us go to the next question now so if a and b are nilpotent in a commutative ring this is very important which ring you are talking you're talking commutative ring then the addition of nilpotent elements is also a nilpotent uh, element so let us first write down what is a 
nil potent element now you must be have some of you must be having an idea about nil potent elements till i will define here for the sake of my lecture what is a nil potent element if uh, if a is uh, in the ring okay and if a is to k becomes uh, identity okay then um, then k a is called a nil potent element so a is to 4 k is 0 identity with respect to the ring i we will always consider as 0 okay and then a is uh, called as a nil potent element okay uh now and and a is to but the thing is that a is to k is zero but a is to k minus one is not zero so its previous power should not be equal to uh zero okay and then in that case this k is called the index of nil potency okay now i will take one minute and explain you what is the uh, meaning of all this okay so consider a very simple uh, ring okay which ring which we should consider suppose i consider uh, z8 okay i'm talking about z8 ring and what i will do is i will uh, try to see one element suppose i take an element <coughs> suppose i take two bar okay then two bar should be multiplied by it so two bar to the fourth power will give me zero bar so two bar is to one bar or, or two bar is to one is two bar and two bar square if i take two bar square two bar into two bar okay is four bar and two bar cube is uh, two bar into two bar into two bar which is eight bar which is zero bar so this means that the this means that two two bar is a nil potent element and what is the index of nil potency and the index of nil potency is how much the index of nil potency is three okay means the highest power the lowest power at which two bar raised to that will become zero that lowest power is how much three suppose i take um, suppose i take four bar in z8 what will happen to four bar in z8 uh, if four bar raised to one is uh, equal to four bar so and so four bar square will become how much 16 bar and that is equal to zero in z8 so this means that four bar is also nil potent and what is the index of four bar or what is the index of nil potency the index is two because it is the highest power uh, it, it is actually the smallest power where the thing becomes zero not highest power okay the smallest power at which it which becomes zero because if you really see that if four bar square is zero then four bar cube will also become zero right then four bar raised to four will also become zero so then you will be confused at which power should i choose so we are going to choose the smallest such power where the element becomes zero but the previous power is not equal to zero okay so this is the first time when the power becomes zero that is the index of nil potency when does the first power become zero and that is the smallest of all okay so like if, if you are working in a set of matrices if you if you look at a set of matrices, suppose i'm taking m2r then what happens for m2r uh, suppose i take a matrix a is equal to what matrix a is one zero uh, zero one okay now what is uh, so this is identity let me not take identity let me take one zero 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 okay what will be a square uh, a square will be the same matrix if you see one zero zero one uh, one zero 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 will remain same what will be a cube the, if you calculate a cube still it will be one zero 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 so this means that a no power of a will actually give you what so a raised to a raised to all powers of a will give you a and that will never be equal to zero this means that this matrix is not nil potent okay because if it was nil potent then some of its power has to be equal to zero so can we write a matrix can i write a two by two matrix okay where the entries are not equal to zero okay uh, don't put all zeros everywhere otherwise there is no point zero matrix is have first power itself is zero so the index of nil potency will be one so i am not talking about a zero matrix so this a has some entries okay it has some non-zero entries okay 
so it is a non zero matrix but it's uh, but it's some power when you take it some power it some power has to turn up to be equal to zero can we find such matrix is it possible to find such matrix so instead of writing a one here if i write a one here okay what will happen if i calculate a square now this is 0 100 and this is again 0 100 100. and when you actually multiply you'll say 0 into 0 1 into 0 is 0 this is again 0 into 0 third and fourth all are zero so this means that a is not equal to 0 matrix a is not zero but matrix a square turns out to be what it turns out to be zero matrix this means that this matrix a is a is a nilpotent matrix okay so 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 given a matrix immediately you can uh, even make out uh, sometimes it is easy to identify a, a matrix is nilpotent or not suppose i take a matrix which is having which is having zero on the diagonal or it is completely upper triangular strict upper triangular okay here you have entries uh, three entries are there so three entries let me write a b c okay then if you find the a square of this particular matrix what will happen let me even not write a b just let me write some entries which are non zero let me write star 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 when i take the square of this matrix when you take the square of this matrix multiply it such any such matrix with any such matrix then what will happen still the lower part will uh, remain what the lower part will remain zero and what will happen is that these two entries will uh, will these two entries that i'm showing you these two entries will become zero when you square the matrix and you will get one number over here you will get it to be uh, one non zero element you will get here what is that number i am not interested but some non zero entry will come here but when you take a cube of that when you take a cube of that what will happen everything will even this entry will then go away and entire matrix will then become a zero matrix so in this case such a type of matrix is a nilpotent matrix of index 2 because it's uh, because i'm sorry of index 3 uh, okay so means the third power is becoming zero but the second power was not coming to be equal to zero so if i have a matrix if, if somebody gives you a matrix right and uh, it is uh, a suppose a 3 by 3 matrix and, and all the numbers are not equal to zero okay and uh, and i am supposed to check that is this matrix a nilpotent matrix so what you do is you you simply find the eigen values now all of you know what are the how to find the eigen values of a matrix right you just simply find the eigen values of that matrix and if it turns out to be that all the eigen values are zero okay all eigen values are zero then there is a result which says that such a matrix has to be a nilpotent matrix so this is one of the simple criteria to check whether a matrix is nilpotent or not okay so now what exercise we want to solve uh, we want to look up over here in this particular section is that if i if i'm working in a ring okay and if i have two nilpotent elements a is and b are uh, both are nilpotent then and that ring is which type of ring that ring is a commutative ring remember this commutative ring is very important this result that's why i cannot apply to the set of matrices because set of matrices is non commutative ring okay so so this means that if i take if if i'm working in a ring which is commutative not like matrices it should not be the ring of matrices and if i have two nilpotent elements then uh, what am i trying to tell you the addition of those nilpotent elements is also a nilpotent element okay for example we have seen here in this previous example look here in uh, look in uh, where have i gone where have i written okay let me look in z8 okay uh, in z8 what were the nilpotent uh, elements two was nilpotent right two is nilpotent element right and afterwards we have seen that uh, even uh four is also nilpotent right and z8 is a commutative ring right so i have two is nilpotent two bar is nilpotent four bar is nilpotent and we are working in z8 and z8 is a commutative ring so by that result now i can say that two bar plus four bar which is six bar so six bar is also six bar will also be a nilpotent element because of this result now i can find new nilpotent elements if i know some some of the nilpotent element you don't have to do this calculation always okay 
so why it happens that two nilpotent elements will give addition to be again nilpotent now that is actually very easy so if a a is nilpotent means some power of a is zero b is nilpotent means some power b is also zero not the same power b may have a different power of nilpotency then if i uh, so what what power should i choose so that a plus b uh, raised to that power will become zero so here you have kth power is becoming zero here i have mth power is becoming zero so which power do you think is a suitable power so that this will become zero the obvious answer is that why don't you choose k plus m if i choose k plus m okay what will happen then this will if i try to write the binomial expansion i will write a raised to k plus m plus the next coefficient will be k plus m choose one a raised to k plus m minus one plus dot 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 k plus m choose r a rest here i have a b a rest to k plus m minus r into b rest to r plus dot 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 last term will be what b rest to m plus k k plus m or m plus k okay and what happens is that if a if the kth power of a is zero k plus one power of a will be also zero k plus two power of a will also be zero if b raised to m is zero this means that b raised to m plus one is zero b raised to m plus two is zero all further powers are zero so if a ra a raised to k is zero then this obviously means that a raised to k plus m also has to be zero so this is the reason this will become zero and again here this will become zero again here after some time a will start losing power and then i will say that in uh, from the right hand side this will become zero the previous thing this will become zero because if b raised to m is zero then b raised to m plus k will also become zero and so on some terms half of the terms a will vanish from the left hand side and from the right hand side b will be vanishing so so from left and right all the terms will start becoming zero 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 and finally this means that this combination will completely become zero and therefore we declare that what a plus b is also what a plus b is also a nilpotent element and what is the index of nilpotency the index of nilpotency will become k plus m okay so i hope you have understood the in this class you have understood what are idempotent elements and what are nilpotent elements and how does the binomial expansion become simple if you are working in the ring zp